Laker fans, how are we doing? It's so great to see everybody. It's Laker basketball. It's that time of year. Friday, Sunday, last week. I know it didn't turn out in the Lakers' favor, but preseason isn't about wins and losses. It's about getting better, who's being aggressive, who, how guys are fitting in, how possible lineups that could work. It's all about trying all that stuff out and kind of kind of seeing what sticks. Obviously, it's extra interesting with J.J. Redick. You know, he's never coached before. So we don't have any tape on how he coaches. Uh, how, when does he call timeouts? Is he... Uh, does he like to – how many guys deep on the bench as he goes? It, it, it's tough to see. And so it, it's made this preseason extra fun, um, something that other preseasons might, might not quite have had. So it's been great. First topic I'm going to get into, Max Christie saying aggressive. I'm going to talk about an NBA GM survey I thought was kind of interesting later on. Um, some LeBron comments came out today I thought was pretty funny. I think it's funny, uh, funny when LeBron kind of just tweets whatever he wants because he's pretty funny at times. And uh, a quick little preview of the Bucks game. I guess I spent too much time here. I was in a preseason game, but uh, we'll touch on them and then underdog pick. Everybody, I'm sorry. I want to apologize. Our first pick did not did not hit. Okay, Sam Darnold sold for us. He did not go over on passing yards. Kenneth Walker only had like five rushing attempts, which is crazy. His over under was set at 16 and a half. I don't know what's going on. I thought Sam Darnold would go off against his old team that cast him aside the Jets. That did not happen. Um, uh, they did get the win, but. We'll get into that later. For you gamblers, stick around. We got a couple selections coming your way. I think, I, th I think it's going to be good. But starting with the Lakers, Max Christie staying aggressive. This was my favorite thing I saw this weekend. And some people might look at his Sunday performance and go: twenty-nine minutes, three for fourteen field goals, two for eight from three, twelve points, three rebounds, and go. Ah, I mean, he had twelve points, but on three for fourteen shooting, that's not great. That's not good. But. Uh, I love that he's taking shots. He's being aggressive because the first thing that JJ Reddick did was hand him a four year, $32 million contract. He believed in him. And some people might go, critics might go, does Max Christie warrant $8 million a year? And clearly JJ Reddick thinks so because he was a great shooter in this league. He was one of the great shooters for his time and see something in him that was some untapped potential. Darvin Ham didn't seem to care about Max Christie. He didn't really seem like he wanted to develop him. There was a week there where he got a couple starts in a row, got some serious minutes because of injuries. I thought he acquitted himself well. I know a lot of you Laker fans did too. I remember Allen was on the post game that night. People were like, why is he not getting time? Darvin Ham put him right back on the bench in favor of Torian Prince and Spencer Dinwiddie and guys that were veterans that you kind of know what they are. And there wasn't a lot of growth there. Max Christie's a guy who could really develop into something special. And I'm glad that J.J. Reddick sees it. And I'm going to read a quote from him, uh, from uh, Max Christie. I think I've made a lot of good strides with my game overall, but I think mentally too with my confidence, kind of just my approach, my mentality coming into the game, I think has gotten a lot better. I think tonight for me, I shot three of 14. Yeah, but I got 14 shots up. I think I was pretty aggressive. I looked pretty confident out there and felt pretty confident out there. I thought all my misses were pretty good misses. Did I take some questionable shots? Sure. But I think for me, just being aggressive, um, is step in the right direction for me in my game. Eventually, I'll knock those shots down at a consistent rate. So that was good. That's exactly what you want to see. He said, eventually, I'm going to knock those shots down at a rate that, that that's going to work for me. That's that, that's the sign of a shooter, a guy who's not scared to shoot. He was great at Michigan State. He was a knockdown three-point specialist. And that's what this team needs. It can't just be D'Angelo Russell hitting threes and taking threes. And LeBron had a career year last year from three. Can't expect that again. It's got other guys step up. That's why the Lakers went out and got Dalton Connect. Gabe Vincent the year before. He was hurt for most of the year last year, so never got to see it. And Max Christie can develop. Gabe Vincent back. Dalton Connect can develop. Uh, Reeves can become a little more consistent, even though Reeves is a great player. And I, I think there's a lot more three-point shooters on this team than, than people realize in scores. And J.J. Wright has been talking about it. Who's going to come off the bench? Every, every, every time, all year, this is what the problem was. It was who's coming off the bench and being effective because it, it, it really wasn't like there was no one there. There was no one that was consistent off the bench. How many times did we come on here and go, the starters were amazing. Stars were great. They were excellent. And what happened? The, the, the bench would sell. The bench would come in the game. They give the whole lead back, just like in the Nuggets series. And, and the starters had to be like so great, so much better than the rest of the entire team who they were playing for them to win. And I think it's going to be different this year. So I'm excited. NBA Jam survey I thought was interesting. This is done. Uh, uh, John Schumann of NBA.com reported on it. This was anonymous GMs, anonymous poll. Uh, the question was, which new or relocated head coach will make the biggest impact on his team? Number one was Mike Budenholzer for Phoenix. We got 
Kenny Atkinson for Cleveland and J.B. Bickerstaff for Detroit each came in at 20 percent. Charles Lee for Charlotte, 10 percent. Jordy Fernandez uh, came in fifth with Brooklyn for 7 percent. And J.J. Reddick came in last at 3 percent. Last year, the high was Ime Udoko at 57 percent, starting with the Rockets. That was kind of an easy pick because obviously he was great with the Celtics and got let go there for, uh, you know, different reasons. Um, this is interesting to me because I don't know if this is more about J.J. Redick or if this is about GMs don't think that a team with LeBron on it is really has too much input on the head coach. Um, I'm excited about J.J. Redick because I don't think that he's going to just do whatever LeBron wants. And I think that was a lot of concern for people. They had the podcast together and it was like their friends and it's just kind of LeBron's puppet. I don't get that sense. You know, watching him on first take and this could be completely, completely wrong. And maybe he is. But he went back at Kendrick Perkins. He went back at a lot of guys. And he was not scared to say his own if the whole room was screaming at him, that he was crazy and wrong. I like that about J.J. Redick. I think he is going to make a big impact on this team. And LeBron's clearly bought in. He okayed it. And I think LeBron knows the narrative about him. And the last thing he wants is another – the Lakers can't afford to mess this up, J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick has, has to work. And I think LeBron knows he has to give away some control a little bit. I think you're seeing that with handing out the Max Christie contract. And J.J. Reddick's been, been um, very vocal about needing guys to step up on the bench. And kind of it's an open competition for those last four four spots um, on the bench because he, he's talked about employing a nine-man rotation. And I, I, I'm, I'm excited. He's been great behind the mic. We all knew he would be, you know, coming from ESPN. Um, he was great there. But uh, it's interesting. I don't know if other GMs are just haters. They don't like the Lakers. You know, it's kind of um, – we know as Laker fans, people don't like the Lakers. You know why? Because we're the greatest franchise in the NBA. I don't care about the Celtics. They won all their titles in the, in the 60s and 70s when they were 12 teams. So um, it's interesting, but uh, that was an interesting GM and or a survey, excuse me. And I think I think JJ is going to prove them wrong. LeBron comments. This was funny. This was, this was um, uh, there are two, two things came out today. I'll start with a little, this one, the Netflix doc, the starting five that's about to drop follow a couple of guys, five guys around um, in the NBA all season. And LeBron was frustrated with his minutes restriction uh, that, that Darvin Ham put him on last year. He said, I hate this bleep already. That just shows you how Darvin Ham did not have this locker room. He had him on the minutes restriction for one game, 29 minutes in the opener against Denver. And then they had to go away and it, um, they had to play him more. He was averaging, I think like 37 minutes a game, something like that. Because everyone knew that if LeBron didn't play, the Lakers were going to lose. They got no bench production, and the only way for the Lakers to be even relevant in the playoff picture was LeBron playing. So the minutes restriction idea really didn't work. I think it's actually a little bit – could work more this year. I think there's a lot it's a lot deeper team if they're healthy. Um, but the key is health. We all know if, you know, Vanderbilt and Vincent, these guys get hurt again, it's going to be right back in the same predicament. So that's why we need Connect and Shafino and these guys to step up. Um, another funny LeBron thing that came out today – not a big fan of having to travel to Milwaukee to uh, play one preseason game. He said, he tweeted, can someone please explain, or was on X, can someone please explain to me why we're getting on a flight and heading to Milwaukee for one preseason game? That was pretty funny. LeBron's got pretty funny when he does the, he does the NFL picks last year. He's on Instagram and he's like rapping and, and singing stuff. And Le LeBron's pretty funny on social media. And I, I thought that was good. He got some hate from a lot of people around the NBA. I, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, I guess you got to fly to Milwaukee for one game and fly back, you know, and, and he's probably, you know, going to play like, what, three minutes and then and then head out. So he, he's probably not too thrilled about it. But uh, it's a great opportunity for these guys to get the young guys to get some get some flow and kind of um, get ingratiated in JJ Reddick's system. Looking at the Bucks game, uh, preview with the Bucs, um, they got eliminated by the Pacers in the first round last year. They didn't have Giannis in that series. They got a bunch of former Lakers, Brooke Lopez, Torian Prince. Um, they're a very veteran team with Chris Middleton, Damian Lillard, Giannis. I think this team can go pretty far if they're healthy. They've really been forgotten about in the Eastern Conference because obviously the Celtics won it last year. The Knicks are kind of the sexy pick to win it all with adding Mikhail Bridges, Carl Anthony Towns, and, and how far they went last year. And then, you know, even down to the Sixers getting getting Paul George and 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 Bede getting that huge extension, losing 25 to 30 pounds. The Bucks kind of got forgot about. It. And it's interesting if this team is healthy, they could they could do some damage. Because if Dame, Chris, and Giannis are healthy in the playoffs, and that's a major if. I know it's a major, it's a major if, but if if it is, 
this, this team could, could, could be a threat in the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference got a top four. I think that's pretty pretty interesting there. And you're not even counting a team like Miami and things like that or Cleveland. So um, for all my gamblers, this is our underdog pick. Rolling NFL because we don't, you know, betting preseason basketball, they don't really offer great lines. We don't know how, how many minutes guys are going to play. So we're kind of staying away from that right now. I got an NFL one, uh, two Thursday nighters, as well with a Sunday. I have Jordan Mason to get one touchdown. Um, he is the running back for the for the Niners. I think they're gonna they're gonna run the ball tomorrow. Uh, Geno Smith lower than 270 and a half pass in rush yards. This is interesting because Geno's been great, and, I, and I'm I'm nervous going against Geno because he's burned me a couple times. But I think division opponent, it always means more defense. His teams know each other super well. The Niners really need a win. Um, so I don't see a big, big passing day for Geno, a bunch of yards. And I think Derrick Henry gets a touchdown for the Ravens against the Commanders. They, 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 they pound the rock in the red zone, and uh, he's kind of taking all, all those goal carries away from Lamar now. Uh, so Lamar doesn't get hurt. So that's what we're rolling with. We're, we're, we're praying for, for to, uh, to go one for two so we can get a little streak going. But uh, let me know in the comments if you're riding with the picks. If you're not, I hear you. Maybe you're fading the picks. I don't know. But as a community, we – we got, we got a ride together. So uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Go Lakers. Excited to watch the game tomorrow. And uh, we'll be back with another preview video for the next game. And, of course, you can catch Alan's show um, every day. So thank you, guys. Appreciate it.